So we're going to begin today with, a, with an interesting series of short presentations on the best way to dose IVC for cancer patients. Short presentations beginning with Dr. Tom Levy, and then we'll have Dr. Manji Riar, and then we'll have the tag team of Michael and Jorge Gonzalez and Masari from Puerto Rico. Is uh, Dr. Sullivan here today? Right. So it'll be these four. They'll each give a short presentation, 10 minutes, and then we'll convene on the stage for a panel discussion with all of us. And we'll have, so keep your questions, uh, prepare your questions while the presentations are being given. And we'll begin now with um, Dr. Tom Levy. Thank you. I just want to put in my two bits worth about IVC and vitamin C, uh, I think just about everybody in this room has already been doing this for some time, or, or even if you're not specializing in cancer, you're giving IVC in a lot of other situations. And I want to add a few of my thoughts and my experience and my observations that will hopefully uh, help you provide even a better treatment and experience for your patients down the road. <clears throat> What I want to say first is to be organized about it, remember the primary aim of any vitamin C protocol, and that is to maximally accumulate vitamin C in its reduced form, not its oxidized form, because a lot of IV vitamin C initially goes into the cell in the oxidized form. So everything you should do should be aimed at optimizing vitamin C inside the cell in its reduced form. <clears throat> The factors I've broken down that should always be a part of considering your dosage is, of course, we're all pretty familiar here that you're not going to get anything done if you don't have a large dose, always multigram. Uh, the root, we have now have a lot of options to augment the IVC, uh, liposome and regular, and I'll touch briefly on that. Rate, okay, how fast do you go? Frequency, how often do you go? One thing I just recently discovered <clears throat> going through Dr. Klenner's original work, uh, not in cancer per se, but in a lot of other infectious diseases, uh, because I found that although we get really good results these days, it's not as good as Dr. Klenner's results. And then I realized everybody today, because you can't give it in a hospital yet, you got to give it in your office, so Kletter would see these patients and either give them IM injections or if they're in the hospital, they'd be giving them something every three, four, six, eight hours. Well, that's going to be profoundly more effective than giving somebody even 50, 75, 100 grams and not getting back to them for a couple of days or even getting back to them 24 hours later. So frequency is very important, at least in infectious diseases, but you'll see it's important in cancer patients as well. Duration, type, uh, always for long-term health, avoid calcium administration. That's a whole another long story. Adjunct therapies, I think we're realizing that really vitamin C augments all other therapies and the only time it would be quote contraindicated would be if you're trying to deliver another pro-oxidant substance to the cancer cell you don't want the vitamin C in the bloodstream at the same time that substance is in the bloodstream or the vitamin C will reliably neutralize it. Okay, so to that degree, vitamin C would be, quote, contraindicated if you're giving any other chemotherapy or pro-oxidant therapy that you're targeting for the cell. However you work it, just don't have it circulating in the blood at the same time the vitamin C is. <clears throat> And then I'll add this thought. Uh, we see a lot of success. We see occasional failure. Uh, we, we see case histories where somebody is responding positively, but maybe their blood work's not normalizing. Uh, well, maybe you won't be able to normalize it. Maybe you won't be able to cure it. But just remember all, really, I, I said almost all, but all. All clinical failures are all lesser clinical responses than what you see or want 
are virtually all due to ultimately inadequate vitamin C delivery to the tissues and inside the cells. So even if you get a positive response at 50 grams, don't think that you're not going to get a much more positive response at 100 or 150. <clears throat> For most cancer patients, the dose is important because you want to get the vitamin C inside the cell in high amounts. Uh, so if you're going to take an equivalent amount of vitamin C, let's say you got 100 grams to give to the cancer patient, what are you going to do the most good with? Give it all at once? or give four 25 gram infusions on four consecutive days. I would submit to you 100 grams all at once is going to give you the most clinical uh, impact for that given quantity of vitamin C. <clears throat> In all of this, I'll expound a little bit more on this. The whole point is to upregulate the fentanyl reaction inside the cancer cell as much as possible. Fentanyl reaction in a nutshell is cancer cells have abnormally high levels of hydrogen peroxide in them because they have abnormally low to absent levels of catalase. So they're basically a little sitting time bomb waiting for you to explode their hydrogen peroxide into hydroxyl radical, which is the most oxidative substance on the planet, ergo the most toxic substance on the planet, ergo the best thing to lyse a cell. So, and what do you do to lyse that hydrogen peroxide? Cancer cells, as well as microorganisms, pathogens, accumulate reactive iron. <clears throat> and so you have ferric iron, hydrogen peroxide, and we have to find some way to get an electron into the hydrogen peroxide. Well, vitamin C just chemically cannot contribute an electron directly to hydrogen peroxide, but it can contribute it to ferric iron, makes the ferric ion ferrous ion, and then the ferrous ion can give that electron to vitamin C. The vitamin C uh, <clears throat> chemically lyses into hydroxide and hydroxyl radical. The hydroxide just goes on to become water, and the hydroxyl radical does its job. So the fentanyl reaction, you need reactive iron, you need hydrogen peroxide, and you need something, of which vitamin C is one thing, to contribute the electron to the ferric ion. Okay, talk about that in a second. Now, <clears throat> rate is important, and a lot of times rate is going to be a really important distinguishing feature as to whether or not your vitamin C infusion is going to be clinically successful in your cancer patient. And I think a lot of failures or suboptimal responses are due to you have a patient, you've given him vitamin C, and let's say you've given him 75 grams and he's felt lousy, and so you back off and give him 50 grams and he feels better, he feels okay. Well, it's true you don't want to make the patient feel lousy, but you're not getting to the point where you're getting the maximal therapeutic effect if you back off. And I have found, worked with, discovered, whatever you want to say, uh, a way to get around this. It's the mop-up vitamin C infusion. Now, uh, I'm not promoting my book, but I just, I don't have a lot of time to talk here. I talk about the mechanism of how vitamin C works in primal panacea. And the concept there is, if you're not only have your head wrapped around this, wrap around it now, all toxins are oxidants. That's how they exert their toxicity. All symptoms are the result of excess oxidation and oxidative stress in one part of the body or another. You cannot have a negative symptom without having this excess oxidation, okay? Now, this means that whether it's a Herxheimer reaction, whether it's a detox reaction, whether it's cancer cells lysing and releasing large amounts of free iron and other uh, debris, if you will, into the bloodstream, all of it is caused by an increased oxidative effect. Well, paradoxically, and believe me, it works like a charm. Your, your, your patients are gonna love you. If you give patient X 75 grams of vitamin C intravenously, 
And by the time they're three quarters of the way through it, they're feeling awful. If you can, finish up the IV. But follow that with less than half or even less than one third of that dose, 50, 30, 25 grams of vitamin C infused at half the rate. And this is what I call a low and slow mop up vitamin C. And what happens, it's sort of counterintuitive at first, but not if you think about it, is all the symptoms are being caused by excess oxidative substances in the blood. And the best way to neutralize that is with antioxidant present in the blood, but you put the antioxidant, the vitamin C, in at a level that's not going to continue to massively lyse the cancer cells or cause the Herxheimer reaction. And by the time another hour, hour and a half has gone fine, your patient is feeling fantastic, and they've had the benefit of the much larger dose to deal with their cancer. Just a point, I won't elaborate on it. When you give vitamin C very fast, especially in older, cachectic patients, and you start running into some symptoms, not necessarily a full Herxheimer-like, a lot of times it will be due to hypoglycemia. So keep that in mind. If they're just feeling out of it, and because of that, something else I won't elaborate on just to say is if you give vitamin C like Klenner did at times, and I'm not saying this is a therapy for cancer, as a rapid IV push, you will reliably induce severe hypoglycemia, 20 to 25 uh, uh, grams per cc, milligrams per cc. Although it's much more tolerated than if you give a pure insulin injection because the vitamin C protects against the hypoglycemia. But the vitamin C is very similar to the glucose. When you give a large amount of C, the body thinks it's glucose and the pancreas secretes insulin. So do you feed them? You feed them, yeah. Uh, if it's severe, you give a little glucose, but you try not to do that because you're getting counter the effect of what you want to accomplish. Uh, adjunct therapies. Can't elaborate except to say that, oh wait, let me go forward to, intravenous vitamin C augmentation. I've since changed this to, to IVC aid therapy, which is augmented intracellular delivery rather than heat. I think that's a little easier to hang your hat on, but here it says heat. Because of what we know about insulin potentiation therapy, you can get virtually all the benefits of that without having a difficult time managing the patients. I mean, it's a pretty uh, intensive type of thing to be dealing with a patient who's got a blood sugar of 20, 25, and you're trying to decide whether to bring them out of it. Well, you give between five and 20 units of humulin insulin in the bag, and you will get a substantially greater influx of your vitamin C inside the cell, along with whatever other nutrients and supplements you've given up to that point in time orally if you, if you gave it like a half an hour, 45 minutes before the IV. It's a very good way to enhance the power of the goal, and the goal is to get the vitamin C inside the cell. Okay, so then uh, let me just say that Finally, what I call the multi-C protocol. And Klenner talked a lot about this, but we as a group, to my observation, have not done it that much, and we're uh, avoiding a very potent and simple way, again, to augment the power of our vitamin C therapy, which is to give as many different forms of vitamin C as possible. Nobody with cancer should not, be receiving, should not be receiving oral liposome encapsulated as well. An enormous pullback on cancer patients is not dealing with their ongoing toxins. So I won't get into dental toxins right this, but I mean, I think most of you know the dental toxins need to come out. But why is that? That's because the toxins are pro-oxidant. And as Dr. Huggins used to say, dealing with this is like trying to dry off while you're still in the shower. So you have to approach them from both ends. Bring the antioxidants up for the cancer cell, bring the ongoing toxin exposures down. And something that's very not much addressed, and I would submit it to you for your patients that can 
tolerate it. You should routinely have them doing a vitamin C flush at least once a week. Not on, not, and not primarily because you're wanting to deliver more vitamin C, but you're preventing an enormous amount of toxicity from ever getting into their body to begin with. It's sort of what I call reverse bulimia. Okay? Ascorbyl palmitate is fat soluble, it's good to add. And uh, I just mentioned uh, the IV with the augmentation. So, then in a nutshell, what I say is remember the goal is to get as much vitamin C inside the cell as possible. You try to augment all the factors that ramp up the presence of all three elements of the Fenton reaction inside the cell. And that's how traditional chemotherapy works as well. The problem with traditional chemotherapy is it, it poisons normal cells as well, which vitamin C doesn't do because normal cells have normal levels of catalase and virtually no peroxide. So you can't activate the Fenton reaction uh, in a lethal way inside a normal cell. So in a nutshell, multi-C protocol, IV vitamin C augmented with insulin, and and push it as hard as you can because you know you have the mop up vitamin C to keep your uh, brittle and uh, symptomatic patients from, from feeling awful and not coming back to see you. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay.